During a warm summer day on June 23, 1838, construction of a psych ward began in an old mining town in Pennsylvania upon a hill on the east coast of the United States. The owner, Aaron West, was a wealthy 30-year-old ex-miner and psychologist who suffered from mild schizophrenia. On normal occasions, West wore his favorite trench coat with 10 brass buttons engraved with his initials, an old battered top hat, gray leather shoes, and usually he carried a broken monocular scope in his right coat pocket as a good luck charm. He wanted to help take care of people with certain psychological disorders who posed as a potential danger to those around him. He and his family were well known because of their mining company, which he stopped taking part in because a cave had collapsed on him several years before and caused some brain damage. Ever since the accident, he hears voices and envisions hallucinations every so often, and he gets rather jittery and he shakes. Construction of West's psych ward, which was his home as well, was completed on a cold snowy day in late December 1839. The outside walls were brown brick and the roofing was made up of wooden shingles with silver trim. The design of the house was Victorian style architecture with wide dormer windows that were painted white. Around the perimeter of the property was a tall stone wall with a metal barred gate at the front. A light cobblestone walkway led from the gate to the front door of the home. Just behind the property was a stream that flowed between the stone wall and a nearby forest. In the main lobby on the wall, sat a display case containing West pickaxe from when he was a miner. Exactly one year later to the very day, Aaron West's life changed forever when he met a man by the name of Gary Andrews. Gary Andrews was a 48-year-old barber with gray hair who was checked in for murder, even though it wasn't really murder. Mr. Andrews had a condition that intrigued West. He was a frequent sleepwalker. While Andrews was sleepwalking, he had killed his entire family. To his surprise when he woke up, he was standing over their bodies in his backyard. Andrews was found guilty by a jury and was most likely to receive a death sentence of hanging at trial, but the judge felt it was better to have him relocated somewhere specifically made for those with mental problems. At night, West and Andrews often spoke of childhood experiences, most of which factored into who they were as adults. The first time Andrews remembered experiencing his sleepwalking was when he was 12 years old living in rural Kentucky. He got out of bed and walked his beagle down his street in the middle of the night. When he woke, he was lying in the tall grass near his dog who had died from a poisonous snake bite. West remembered a time when he was 15 years old visiting his uncle with his younger sister. There was a storm bef the day before, so there was a smell of freshness in the air and the grass was wet. The sky was sunny and clear. He and his sister Ada were skipping rocks into a river and waiting for their parents to come get them. West's uncle Thomas had called to him, and when West returned, Ada was gone. She had slipped on a rock near the river and was swept downstream. It was presumed she drowned and her body was never recovered. West and his family had searched the nearby woods and followed the stream downriver, but never found a trace. Fueled by guilt, Uncle Thomas hung himself less than a week later. One night during a thunderstorm, West was on his way to speak to Andrews, but something caught his attention. He was walking through the halls and looking at paintings that lined the walls when he heard the creaking of the wooden floorboards at the end of the hall. A painting of Martin Van Buren fell to the floor and he saw a ghostly shadow around the corner. West assumed it was Andrew sleepwalking, but didn't know how he would have gotten out of his locked room. He chased after the figure through the dark halls and up the stairs into the attic, which happened to be his sleeping quarters. At the top of the stairs sat a picture torn in half vertically. It was him in this half of the picture, but the other half was unknown. In his room was a lit candle on a table. How it got there, he didn't know, and Andrews was nowhere to be seen. The room was a mess, his journals were spread across the floor, his bed was tossed over, and his clothes were out of the closet. A note lay on his bed saying, I know what you did. He crept to the open closet door with a knife in his hand and a lit candle in the other. As he drew near, his heart pounded and his hands started to shake. He lifted the candle and saw a skeleton hanging in his closet. Startled, Wes stepped back, but the floor creaked and he fell through down to the floor below. Now back in the hallway where the Van Buren painting fell, Wes lay on his back looking up at the hole in the ceiling, seeing a black shadowy figure standing looking down at him and holding a pickaxe. He said to himself that it wasn't real, but that didn't stop him from being scared. Into the basement he ran to hide and think what was going on, shaking and speaking incoherent sentences to himself. He heard screams and cries for help. The wallpaper beside him was peeling off the walls, and he felt the room was shrinking in on him. He flinched at the sound of scratching, and he hoped that the roar of thunder would stop. He heard footsteps coming closer. The ghostly figure was nearby. It raised the pickaxe in the air, ready to swing, but the lights came on and it all went away. It wasn't real, any of it, but such activity was common in the house on the hill. Aaron West was a patient at a mental institution for having dissociative identity disorder.
he had multiple personalities. He also suffered from memory loss and impulse control. West was not a wealthy ex-miner and psychologist, but instead he used to be the owner of a shop selling optical devices such as binoculars and monocular scopes. It all started in 2004 when he was rock climbing with his parents when he was 23. His parents were below him, and the harness holding them all started to break from the weight. He didn't know what to do, but he cut them loose, hoping that the reduction of weight would prevent him from falling to his death rather than all three of them. The harness broke anyway, but he managed to survive the fall unlike his parents. He cracked his skull from the fall and fell into a three-month coma. The emotional stress led to schizophrenia and his other disorders. Emotional distress often caused him to flip into his alternate personality, which was a violent gambler interested in Western films. When confronted by his doctor, Gary Andrews, he had no idea what was going on and where he was. He refused to believe anything until his doctor showed him a picture torn in half, the other half to the picture he had found previously. When put together, the picture was of Wes when he was a child and a girl standing next to him. The girl was his sister, who he had drowned in a river five years before. He had also murdered a man with a pickaxe after gambling and losing tremendous losses. The life Aaron West knew was a complete manufacture of his own mind. His visions, or hallucinations, were derived from people he had met and his past experiences. Numerous times before, West was told of his condition, but because of his memory problem, problem he never recalls any of it, and the process repeats itself. He took a walk outside with supervision and thought about his situation. It saddened him knowing that his life was all a lie and that he'd be spending the rest of his life institutionalized. He looked up at the sky uh, and he saw a storm drawing near and his hands started to shake. He wanted to leave this place and start a new life, isolated and safe, so he started to run for the gate. Staff members and guards started to follow him to escort him back inside, but West suddenly stopped. His mind reset as he stood on the old mossy cobblestone walkway staring at his bare feet. He turned towards the guards and introduced himself and asked if they had seen his shoes. He told them to make sure Gary Andrews' door was locked to prevent him from sleepwalking around the building again. They all walked back inside to get out of the rain to repeat another cycle of Aaron West as he is trapped in his own mind, a prisoner to his memories, and a prisoner to the house on the hill forever. And this is why pumpkins are purple.